Hello everyone, welcome to the Ichimoku.co daily stock market review for the trading day ending Thursday, June 23rd. Firstly to the S&P 500 and uh, here we see the trend continuing to the upside for today. The current candle forming a higher high and a higher low. Very strong buying coming into the market today. Uh, bouncing off the 2093 previous level of resistance. Uh, the buyer is strongly in control, strongly committed as evidenced by the large size of the uh, range here. The large size of the uh, white body of the candle in the market closing up at the high. So strong commitment. Uh, strong net momentum to the upside and, this, and the buyers closing with very strong control. Now we do have some uh, potentially strong resistance overhead extending up to that uh, major high around 21.34. Uh, whether the buyers have built enough momentum to trade up through that area remains to be seen. There are three levels before we trade to that region. So we are going to have to see a continuation of that strength on the buyers. Now what's not reflected here is the latest polls or the earliest polls with the Brexit vote in the UK and it is suggesting at the moment uh, that uh, the, the exit vote is uh, slightly stronger than the Remain vote and uh, that could have uh, um, ramifications for financial markets and we'll look at the uh, S&P 500 futures uh, in a minute and we are seeing that there is some selling coming in to the S&P 500 futures so uh, we just need, do need to be very cautious but uh, as this market has closed we have seen the buyers uh, take control very strong buying in terms of Ichimoku with the market trading above the cloud the Kijinsen, the Tengsen and the Chika Span is very strongly reflecting this uh, solid upside momentum and look into our bands here and uh, there was a possibility as uh, the market had retraced back to within the bands and was finding support down at the lower bands uh, that we weren't going to see a resumption of this strong bullish tone to the market but we have seen that somewhat the bands were squeezing up we've seen a strong bullish breakout to the upside what we want to see is strong follow through and the uh, swing high up here roughly about the 2120 mark taken out in a bullish manner so we want to see strong bullish follow through to confirm and uh, a lot does depend on the uh, next uh, a few hours or so as we get the results of Brexit so we're still a, a bit too early to call but as I've mentioned numbers certainly aren't favoring uh, a nice extension of this trend to the upside now if we just look at the S&P 500 uh, futures here and just looking at the session that has completed, uh, the session that completed was trading above the Ichimoku cloud for the entire day. Um, rallying solidly off uh, Tenkatsen and Kijinsen support, highlighting a very strong market in all three time frames, testing to the second pivot point resistance level, coming off finding support at the Kijinsen, bouncing off there, breaking out in a, in a uh, on a very strong bullish candle, and trading to the third pivot point resistance level. Now, as I mentioned often, uh, when we do end up trading to or beyond those third levels, it does tend to reflect an extreme day, and we don't tend to see strong follow through. But if we look at the new session as it's opened, for the past three hours we've seen uh, strong selling. The market was looking a little overextended in depth above the Ichimoku cloud. The Ichimoku cloud was very thin and now we've seen a change of sentiment in all three time frames with the uh, market trading well down through the Ichimoku cloud. Um, we are trading towards that third level. So we are likely to see an extreme day today. We're not likely to see strong follow through for the next day, although that doesn't always uh, remain the case. But uh, when we have a market shock, that's when that throws all of that out of the out of whack uh, with this idea that the third uh, trading to the third pivot point uh, resistance or support level is uh, um, has ramifications for the next day. Um, the important thing here is we've seen as the market's been trending down we've seen a, a good extension to the range suggesting that the sellers are very very eager and becoming even more eager but this range of this candle is looking very very overextended and a little overdone and at the moment in this candle is developing we are seeing a uh, something of a, the start of a loss of commitment here so uh, a lot depends on the uh, polls for the British referendum whether to exit the uh, European community and I think we just need to be very cautious over the next few hours. The sentiment indicators and uh, just looking at the VIX indicator and the VIX had continued to come off and uh, the VIX moved down below its 50-day uh, uh, moving average 
uh, sorry, it's a long term moving average and below the shorter term moving average and is suggesting uh, that uh, for the session that has just closed uh, that traders were feeling fairly comfortable with the price appreciation and there wasn't any great fear in the market. Also the oscillator had moved down below its minus 5% warning level and we can see that the RSI of the uh, VIX indicator had moved down from an overbought position. So this was suggesting that uh, traders were feeling fairly comfortable with the rise in the S&P 500 that we saw today. But if we now look at the VIX futures, and uh, here we see for the current session, uh, we're looking at the bands here, the break out to the downside. Uh, the VIX futures for the session that has finished trading down to that third pivot point support level, an extreme day in terms of trading down there, and uh, no strong follow through. And in fact, we've seen uh, the VIX moving significantly higher well through the uh, first pivot point resistance level through the upper band which is uh, now fairly wide and uh, it is suggesting uh, that we do now have some fear entering uh, the uh, market in terms of the equities markets in terms of the traders and is suggesting uh, that uh, there is uh, perhaps some troublesome times ahead if the VIX vote uh, certainly doesn't go the way that financial markets uh, want it to and at the moment as I've mentioned the um, the uh, Brexit vote is uh, suggesting or the British referendum uh, European Union vote is suggesting at the moment that uh, the exit polls are leading just looking at our various asset classes versus the uh, equities asset class and we're comparing the uh, bond ETFs, the gold ETF versus the uh, S&P 500 ETF and uh, here in the uh, bond ETF, the 20 plus year treasury bond fund, T or T is the code, we've seen it move down below the middle band here and suggesting that that strong bullish tone that we saw previously is no longer in the market. The trend continued down in the first term time frame with the sellers in control and if we look at relative strength versus the SPY ETF the S&P 500 representing the equity market it is trending down solidly down below the uh, um, window here down below the bands and bands had squeezed and suggesting we could see further downside there but the momentum of that uh, trend in terms of relative strength had been moving down and it's now down below 100% suggesting that the bonds as at the close of the uh, equity session were underperforming solidly underperforming the equities market now just using the Optima uh, trading platform and uh, or charting platform uh, by uh, market analyst and uh, using the relative rotation, ro relative rotation graphs um, and uh, we're analyzing in a similar manner to our uh, relative strength versus the S&P 500 in terms of trend and momentum and uh, here we see uh, that the bonds TOT uh, is still up in the leading quadrant but we see it coming off rapidly over the last three or four sessions and it is moving down towards that weakening um, area and is suggesting uh, that we are seeing the beginning of the uh, uh, equities outperform the bonds as well as gold and silver here and both are perhaps uh, starting to rotate. If we look at it, we can look at it over a period of time and this is the beauty of using the Optima program where we can actually uh, just watch how uh, the asset classes rotate in a cyclical fashion from underperformance to overperformance and back into underperformance and we can use that for timing our uh, allocation to our asset classes. Now this is on a daily basis and it can also be done on a weekly basis. Now just also looking at the gold ETF and uh, very similar to the bonds and this certainly did suggest that there was a strong flow of capital uh, into equities, away from gold, away from bonds, and bonds as uh, something of a uh, uh, flight to, uh, to quality asset, and also gold as a safe haven. And we've seen uh, a for today's session a flight to uh, the equities market. But if we look at gold futures and the uh, new session that has uh, just started trading, we are seeing. Um, perhaps a flight of capital to gold as a safe haven with regards to what's happening with the 
British referendum. And uh, at the moment in this current candle it is forming, we have seen extreme trading and uh, we are seeing uh, some indecision in the uh, gold market at the moment. And uh, perhaps this is suggesting uh, that the uh, early polls are now starting to change uh, and starting to reflect uh, that we are perhaps seeing... Uh, um, a return of the vote back to remain. So um, the jury is still out on that. We do need to monitor what's happening with the vote. But we saw that uh, the selling in the gold uh, futures on the hourly charts, uh, especially throughout the second part of the session, testing down to the second pivot point support level. Uh, then it, at the opening of the session, uh, testing lower, but then rallying as we saw that vote start to come out with a bullish breakout above the bands here. And at the moment, the uh, um, upper band is holding a support. And uh, what we need to watch is whether we remain up above that upper band or if the market does trade down to within the bands. And at the moment, there's a possibility of the market trading within the bands. And as we watch it, we are going to test that um, upper band. And the question here is, will it act as uh, support? and uh, will the market close within the bands and if we do close within the bands it will suggest that the bit of a scare that we had with the Brexit vote uh, is perhaps easing. Uh, at the moment some buying coming into the bonds now and just hovering around that upper band. So we do need to uh, be very cautious at the moment and uh, just watch where capital is flowing to and whether we are seeing a flight of capital into gold as a safe haven. And we had seen some of that, but at the moment it is starting to weaken. Now also, um, just looking at the various areas of support and resistance, and these are taken off the daily charts, and uh, the market did uh, break out through the 1273 level, has had held as previous resistance, bullish breakout, and then for this current hourly session, we did see the market trade up through the 1284.9, which has been an important level in the past, and being strongly rejected from there. So not only are we seeing uh, the uh, uh, pivot point resistance levels coming into play, but those uh, levels on the daily charts as well and uh, if we refer here to the daily chart um, we have seen gold futures in the new session interacting with the Tankertsen as well which was trading near that 1284.9 level and being rejected from there um, so very important trading coming up over the next day